Joining us now is The Sun's travel editor, Lisa Minow, to talk us through the confusion. And Rebecca Long, who is suffering herself because you moved your holiday to Spain this year and now can't cancel it. So talk us through your dilemma, because I expect it reflects lots of people's. Um, so we booked our family holiday last January with TUI. Um, we were supposed to go in June, and obviously, like a lot of other people, that changed. So they gave us a 20% incentive to move it to this year. So we did that. Um, that 20% only just covered the new price because obviously they'd gone up. Um, then we didn't know at the time, obviously, there would be the traffic lights or the quarantine. So as soon as Boris Johnson mentioned that, we I, I rang TUI. Um, that was six hours over three days to try and get through. Finally spoke to a very nice lady who was very sympathetic, but unfortunately couldn't do anything. Um, if we were to get a refund, we would be getting £113 back of our £1,800. Um, and if we amend it to the same week next year, it's an additional £900. So mm. with, we even with the cost of the tests, um, which... For a, uh, for a child uh, over six to go to Spain, they require one. So even for us, for three tests at £90, and my husband requiring a test to release one on day five, which is an, another £100, it's still cheaper than the £900 um, the next year. So do you have any concerns about going health-wise, or is it purely to try and salvage something of this hugely expensive fiasco? I'm, I'm not concerned health-wise. We've been to the hotel before. It's large. There's lots of space. The beach is very close. So, you know, we we can make that work. So, But it's just the fact that we're forced to mm. go because there's no other option. And yet the government are saying don't go. Matt Hancock is saying don't go. And, you know, it's, it's like I, we feel bad that yeah. we're mm. going because we're told that we shouldn't be. Mm. You feel like you're going against government advice, yeah. even though you're having to do it for the least. I mean, this is not an uncommon situation. We've got so many, haven't we? Oh, just so Rebecca, many people I mean, so saying many people the same thing. so confused. Um, well, Chewy have said uh, in a statement that um, they are trying to offer customers flexibility and choice uh, over the summer, although it sounds from your experience there that that's not happening. But uh, they say where borders are open, uh, the uh, advice allows travel and we will operate to those destinations, review holiday cancellations in line with government updates every three weeks. Um, and we know that some customers are unsure about travelling this summer. Uh, so we've offered free changes 14 days before travel. Well, for anyone due to travel before the end of August. But the problem, Lisa, of course, is that you might be have that ability to change, but you not, might not be able to afford the change in mm. the sense that, as we were just hearing there, it might cost you an extra £900 to move it to another week of the year or next year. It's a, a really diabolical situation for people. What can Rebe what, Rebecca, what can people like her do? And there's so many coming on her iPad with similar dilemmas, bought before the pandemic, moved it because had to, go to cost them a fortune to move it again. Well, I think what's encouraging is that this is package holidays we're talking about here in this particular case. Um, TUI are basically saying they are waiting until the latest update in the changes to the green list. And if, as I don't think, um, I don't think Spain will be added to the green list um, in early end of May, beginning of June, they will then cancel those holidays. And they're actually cancelling those holidays for a different reason. As we've already heard today, um, it's because the FCDO advises against all but essential travel to Spain at the moment and doesn't look like they're going to change that anytime soon. So the tour operator will then be forced to cancel the holiday and you will be able to then get your money back. You're entitled to your money back once the holiday has been cancelled. And it's really important for people to understand if they've booked a package holiday don't just not pay the final balance it's better to pay the final balance and then you have far more protection once the holiday is then cancelled because the tour operator won't take you to a destination that is on the fcdo's banned list i guess it's the problem with amber countries though isn't it that it's not banned but it's against a, a, a government is saying unless it's something very very extraordinary like a sick relative that you need to go and visit don't go well that's right but again it's because these two different lists that we've got aren't aligned and they're not joined up so at the moment the fcdo says that you're safe to go to various different greek islands but those greek islands are on the amber list and that's where we're going to have the problem because 
it's not going to trigger tour operators and airlines cancelling those holidays or flights because the country is technically safe to go to. And it's putting the consumer in the middle of this in a really difficult position. And airlines and travel companies who've had no money for many, many months now um, into an even more difficult position trying to predict whether or not a destination is going to be on an amber list, uh, a no safe ban or non ban on the FCDO list. And it really is down to the government, I think, to align those two lists so it's be much clearer for people to understand what's going on. Yes, it's almost like the amber list is a sort of carrot that's been dangled and then you're getting hit by a stick at the same time. It's sort of both and neither in many ways. Um, let's get some answers from the government then. I mean, you can stay on the line, both of you, actually, and, and listen into this. We've got uh, the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps, is here. And, um, Grant, I'm hoping you were able to hear some of what was being said there. And it's obviously a very live situation. These are, you know, financial decisions that uh, families who have worked hard and saved hard and, and struggled, perhaps, in the last year, are having to make decisions about perhaps thousands of pounds that they've put into a holiday. What would What is your advice? I mean, it is confusing. I know the government's saying we're being very clear, but it, clearly it's not clear enough because you're either losing money uh, or you're having to isolate and lose money because you can't work. The government says don't go. The holiday company says, well, it's not illegal, so you're going to have to go. Yeah, and I really feel for those families, actually, particularly uh, not people who've booked since the you know, traffic light system's been in place, because we've said all along, uh, red and amber aren't for holiday destinations, but particularly some of those people you were just talking to where people have booked last year and then it's been moved and then, you know, never dreamt that a year later it'd still be uh, a problem. Uh, and then they find themselves in this really difficult situation. And I just appeal to the holiday companies, and there is protection in place for particularly package holidays uh, through the Atoll system, um, to be as flexible as possible and as helpful uh, as possible. It is, I know, a frustrating situation. As we all see here, frankly, and wait to see what the virus does next and wait for the data. You, you said to appeal to the travel it? company. Lisa had a very specific question for you there, which is that if you could ally these two lists, it would give a more clear cover, because the travel companies are, to be fair, they have had a, a devilish job to try yes. to predict what they can and can't offer holidays to, as, as things have changed. You might argue things have changed for very good reasons. But why can't we ally those two lists to give yeah, clarity no, and protection? Uh, there's no doubt at all that coronavirus has made life impossibly difficult for not just people, not just for holiday makers, but for the travel companies as well. And you ask about the lists. They're actually looking at slight, two slightly different things. So you could have a country uh, where um, the FCDO, the Foreign Commonwealth Office, what they do is look at the ability of that country to treat people in a situation where they may need emergency help, and then they advise off the basis of that, which is different from uh, what the traffic light system itself is looking exactly. at, and which the is point where it's is, safe Why to are they different? Because one offers clarity and protection and the other doesn't. That's yes. Lisa's uh, point. And I think, actually, what will happen uh, uh, over a period of time is uh, the, the lists are likely to come more into, um, it, it, into the same order. It's simply because so they're not, measuring different things. Why not do it now? Things. Why not do it now? Yeah, because, and that would um, solve the problem that you outlined so brilliantly when you first spoke that people are facing. Why, why yeah. would you not do it now? But, because that would then destroy what the Foreign Commonwealth uh, Development Office, the FCA, CDO list is actually there for, which is to advise about how safe people are to visit countries for a whole range of reasons. For example, if a country is experiencing a civil war or a problem with the health system or whatever it is, the FCDO system looks at that. It's not looking, you know, so if you, you split that apart, then you'd be sending people who uh, might be going to war-torn countries, for example, so that wouldn't quite work. But I think what will happen is uh, we've got these review points for the traffic light system, the next one being the, the first week in June. Um, and essentially what's happened is we've just got a long way ahead in the UK with vaccinating people and we're waiting for other countries to catch up in order that their coronavirus cases are lower and their vaccinations higher. And there are a couple of other things that we have to look at. For example, the reliability of their data and also uh, whether they're able right. to sequence the coronavirus, so which is very important you... for looking at the variations. So what do you want families to do this morning who are, as many of them have messaged us this morning, and we were hearing there from Becca, got the dilemma. They've got a holiday book, say, for example, on June the 10th to go to somewhere in Spain. Spain is on the amber list. So uh, the government, the prime minister himself and Bat Hancock are saying, don't go to amber list countries unless there's a real, pro a real reason to go. Most of these are just holidays for leisure, of course. So you've paid for it. 
The holiday company is saying, we can't refund that money because it's not illegal to go. Yeah, government... But, but if you do go, then you have to isolate, as the government wants you, for 10 days when you come back. Most people can't afford to do that because they're working. What do you want those families to do? Yeah, to lose for, for... the money um, or to not, and not go, yeah. or to go against government advice? Because those are literally the only two options families yeah. have. But for, first of all, please don't book if you're not already in that situation. But I do understand the, the situation, particularly with the, uh, the families that you've had on, where they booked last year and these mm. are holidays that have been moved around. Um, secondly, uh, we will be uh, putting every pressure on and asking uh, all the holiday companies to be as flexible as possible. Thirdly, and I'm afraid this is uh, uh, difficult, I know, but we just have to be a little bit more patient to see what the next unlock brings. I don't know the answer to that yet because I haven't had the data from the Joint Biosecurity Centre, who can't provide it too early because it changes all of the time. So it's in everybody's interest to wait until it's as up to date as possible before the changes are uh, announced. So it will be different for different families. That We, as I say, appeal to people not to be booking fresh holidays, though I accept entirely that's not the situation that uh, some people are in where holidays have been moved uh, around. No, indeed. And I mean, you say it'd be different to families. Of course it will, because there'll be some people who can afford to lose the money and there's some people who can't. When you say uh, put pressure on the companies, what does that mean? Tell them off or, or give them support? So they so, can do it, because yeah, they're so an the industry that, that's really suffered and struggled. They, they have indeed. And one of the things we've done is come forward with um, a, a, a whole range of different support, £7 billion for the aviation sector as, as a whole, but also specifically for those holiday companies and the package holiday companies. Um, they can now provide um, vouchers as well as the cash back. Previously, the under the Atoll scheme, that's the protection that a lot of people would be familiar with when you buy a, a package holiday, they could only give the cash back. And of course, that was squeezing the holiday company uh, into potentially putting them in a difficult position, mm. uh, even going bust, uh, because they were having to hand the cash yes. back. Uh, we now stand behind. Government now backs a guarantee for a voucher as well. So it's as good as cash for the consumer. So we are, so government are doing things to help. We're also, of course, working with the, uh, the, the holiday um, sector. And we're also, I'm afraid, having to ask for people to be patient. I know it's not ideal. There's nothing about coronavirus that's ideal. Uh, we'll have to be honest about that. It's been a, a you know, terrible year. One of the reasons why people want to go away, but we'll just have to be a little patient for the next review. Mm. Um, yes, I mean, very difficult to give our viewers any answers there this morning from what you've said, unfortunately, uh, yeah, for their, look, for like their immediate dilemmas, some, of course. I'd love, to, I'd love to give some sort of glib, simple right. answer. It just isn't that straightforward okay. because people understand that after a year yes. of being locked down and everyone coming forward for the vaccines, we've got to be incredibly yes, except cautious. Except you have opened an ambulance, which then confuses matters. Right.